In this module, we're going to review creating a solution selection matrix. And I really like this quote by Albert Einstein, make everything as simple as possible, but not simpler. So it needs to be just simple enough that it can be implemented, it's usable, it's functional, but not so simple that it doesn't work. So keeping things as simple as possible, let's look at the fact that there are seven musical notes. Now think of your favorite musical artist and what they've been able to do with only seven musical notes. There are seven colors in the rainbow. Now consider your favorite painter and what that person has been able to do with the seven colors of the rainbow. So the point is, let's keep it as simple as possible, but not simpler than that. Okay, so here's an example of a solution selection matrix. And first we're going to determine what the selection criteria is, and then we're going to weight this selection criteria. So in, you may use a pairwise comparison, or you may sum this to 100%, so you give this all sum percentage of 100%, or you may simply rank these one through the number of criteria. Then you're going to determine what is the output or critical to customer characteristic we're working on. And that may come from a SIPOC or a cause and effect matrix. Then we'll enter the root cause, and that may come from our cause and effect diagram or a 5Y root cause analysis. Then we'll brainstorm as a team all the potential solutions to solve our problem. Once we've done that, we'll then give those potential solutions a score of a 1, 5, or 9. Again, I've seen 1, 3, 5. I've seen 1, 2, 3, low, medium, high. Whatever works best for you. I like 1, 5, and 9 because the final result then shows a distinction between what would be the low, medium, or high. So a 1 means, no, this solution does not meet the selection criteria. A 5 means it somewhat meets the criteria. And a 9 means it fully meets the criteria. So here's an example. The problem was our office turnover rate is 15% as opposed to the goal of 3%. Our statement, uh, goal statement was to implement a solution to reduce that from 15% to less than or equal to 3% within 30 days. So we listed our critical to customer uh, characteristics, the outputs from the process, as well as the root cause from the root cause analysis. Then as a team we brainstormed several potential solutions to achieve this goal statement. Once we brainstormed all the potential solutions, we gave them a score of a, or a rank of a 1, 5, or 9. Again, we gave that solution a, a rank of a 1 if it did not meet the selection criteria. If it moderately met the selection criteria, we gave it a, a rank of a 5. And if it fully met the selection criteria, we gave it a rank of a 9. Once we've gone down through every one of our potential solutions and gave each one of those a rank, for every one of the solution criteria, the template automatically gives a total score. In this case, we're looking for natural cutoffs in the total score. So those that are the highest score, we will assign those a Y for a yes, we're going to implement it. And those with the lowest score, those are going to get an N for no, we're not going to implement it. And this one, we have a question mark. We may come back and implement this one as well. It's somewhere in, it's kind of in the medium score level. So that's an example of creating a solution selection matrix. So don't forget to download your complimentary Excel toolboxes containing this template as well as many others. You can get that at valuegenerationpartners.com. You can select the download page and from there you will be able to download any one of these Excel toolboxes, again containing several templates used in these types of initiatives. So good luck creating your solution selection matrix, and thanks for joining this brief overview.